before we do that, let me uh, just cover the conceptual question since we've been doing it. And uh, I, I do think uh, it's useful for me, especially to have done this um, in future semesters to refer to. Uh, it's, uh, you know, with the questions like this, one of the things that actually I think uh, would be pedagogically useful is to have um, like sample student responses to kind of talk through because you already have my model answers, but the model answers are kind of what your instructor thinks about and um, and uh, the, like sharing your fellow student responses is logistic, logistically difficult in the sense that um, I have to get their permission and, you know, uh, but with the AI generated response to the extent that they are anywhere close to what uh, you might have submitted, you know, it's a kind of good uh, facsimile to start with. So uh, let me just start with the first question. Uh, I think in this set, everything comes from the textbook, so it'll be... Um, Easy, I think. Textbook questions, they tend to be, I, I think there's um, a lot of examples already in the training text. So I think they um, get answered relatively easily. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, what is um, the relationship between potential difference fields? Okay, yeah, it is fun. Yeah, yeah, there is a fundamental relationship. Um, yeah, yeah. And the reverse, you see that kind of reverse of that in a conductor. When there's no electric field, the electric potential doesn't change, but it can be at a constant non-zero value. Um, yeah, you know, potential difference by calculating the, yeah, that's all good. Um, let's see, what is the strength in a region where electric potential, yeah, it, they should do zero, yeah. Okay, uh, I think that's a good, um, about the right length, A plus for that, I mean, not, you know, that identical thing, but some a response of that detail and length that have been a uh, start response, that, that's a good response. And um, <laughs> I, I don't, I can't quite remember right now if uh, I had some said something else in the model answer. Uh, proton rays from rest and electric field really move in the direction of increasing or decreasing, decreasing electric potential. Uh, yeah, decreasing electric potential. Uh, how about if an ele increasing electric potential? So the electric potential, it's, uh, you know, related to electric potential energy, but not the same. Um, being positively charged, yeah, you force that rise from regions high. This sounds a little uh, circular to me. It's like proton has a property to move towards decreasing potential. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a potential energy decreases. That's the important part. I think uh, everyone has that mechanical sense that things move from place of high potential energy to low potential energy. And that's really your guiding thing as you go through here. And if electron is released, then increasing electric potential because increasing electric potential means more negative electric potential energy. Um, high and lower electric potential, it's... What? I'm um, sorry. Um, yeah, it's a potential energy increases uh, in the sense that if the potentials are positive, then it's less negative in terms of electric potential energy. Um, wait, what? Uh oh, yeah, I think. Yeah, I don't know why it brought in kinetic energy. Uh, uh, force that moves it from reasons low electric potential. Uh, yeah, I don't, this last sentence didn't really add anything. It's, uh, maybe it didn't have any kinetic energy to decrease. Uh, yeah, yeah. This, that's a bit of an odd thing to add on at the end. A neutron um, doesn't go anywhere because it's got no net electric charge. Um, there is a, something called the neutron electric dipole moment, which people are still trying to measure, but that's not related to this question. But it's the relationship between voltage and energy. Yeah, it should say it's multiplication by charge, yeah. Or the voltage difference is the potential energy difference divided by charge. Um, yeah. yeah, related, but not the same thing. It's, uh, that's why I prefer to say voltage and not electric potential, because uh, electric potential being related to electric potential energy, it's really easy to kind of get them mixed up, you know, say one thing and mean the other. But when you say voltage, it sounds a little different from potential energy. So I, I prefer to say voltage whenever I, I use the voltage as a synonym for electric potential, uh, 
without energy. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, there are some textbooks that uh, draw a distinction between what they will call voltage and what they call, will call electric potential. Some textbooks I've seen, I think, uh, only refers to electric potential difference as voltage, which that's not the distinction I draw. So. Um, okay, uh, let's look at the third question. So that response was also good, except for that one weird um, sentence here that I thought just came out of nowhere. Um, AI sometimes does that were, I don't know, maybe human beings do that too. Sometimes you write down what's in your head and you forget to connect all the dots that were in your head. Okay. How its potential compares to the point charge? Very similar as long as you're outside the sphere. Uh, where its electric potential differs to that of once you are inside the potential, inside the sphere. Then there's a, a bit of a complicated expression that you have to follow. Um, yeah, outside the sphere is the same. It's a, this is really the accomplishment of Gauss's law or application of Gauss's law where you can show that really easily. Um, the, yeah. yeah. Uh, potential inside the sphere, yeah. So the electric field will go as linear to the, um, to the, um, the elect electric field will go to linear to R and that means uh, the potential will go as, um, I think, uh, kind of in this shape, square of the bar. <laughs> um, um, didn't mention conductor. Oh, wait, is it P? No. Yeah, so the, the thing is, okay, so this paragraph is a little bit, um, it's off topic. Because if we have a uniformly charged sphere, that cannot possibly be a conductor. Because uh, if you put some charge on a conducting sphere, it would not remain uniformly charged. It would actually become something like uniformly charged a spherical shell. So it, it really doesn't uh, make sense to bring in the possibility of the object being a conductor. Because that really changes the condition. Uh, so I'm going to skip this. <laughs> but uniformly charged spherical shell, which would be identical to uh, conducting sphere, uh, conduct charge on a conducting sphere, uh, uh, far from anything else. The electric shell is the same as that of a point charge. Uh, yeah, the, the, what we said up, up there. Um, once you are inside, then the electric field goes to zero, right? Therefore, potential is constant, not zero. Uh, it's constant at the value that was on the right at the uh, boundary of the shell. Um, yeah, that looks good. So other than that uh, one paragraph that I don't think really belonged anywhere, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, other than that, it, it's good. Um, okay, next question. We have a map of ah, the distances tell you, uh, well, how steep the slope is, basically. Uh, can a map of direction of back A? Um, all right. So this is how you can infer the electric field strength from a picture of equipotentials. When they are, so, you know, I don't know, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> um, skip. I'm asking you the question. Why are you asking me the question? Skip. <laughs> oh. So, um, so usually the usual practice in people drawing equipotential lines or equipotential surfaces is to space them equally as far as the spacing of the potential goes. So um, the distances tell you that it took uh, less physical distance to make the same voltage change. So um, I didn't ever bring up, so you know, the definition of the electric potential um, uh, in terms of the electric field. So that definition goes as, um, so the, the magnitude of electric field is the voltage difference divided by displacement. Or, you know, this follows from the uh, voltage difference um, for a uniform electric field being electric field dot product with the uh, delta x. And I always forget this, there's an actually minus sign here. Here I'm going to just say it's the absolute value. 
So um, if a uh, electric field is greater in a region for a picture drawn with the same electric potential difference, the spacing will have to decrease so that electric field is greater. Um, the electric the rate of yeah rate of change of electric potential as a function of position, not as a function of time. Uh, if they close together, it indicates high electric field. Yeah, uh, yeah. As for the direction, it's perpendicular to the potential surface, right? Because that's the kind of the direction in which um, potential changes um, is kind of um, related to this. Uh, yeah, along a potential surface, no potential energy change. Um, that seems all good. Uh, let me just keep going. Uh, be a positively charged um, conductor can be at a negative electric potential, but it would require a yeah specific set of circumstances like point relative. To the, uh, usually, doesn't have to be, but usually, sure. <laughs> it's not arbitrarily set to zero. It's, I mean, fine, fine. It's fine. <laughs> I, I call it the universal reference point. It, it, like no, I mean, sure, it doesn't have to be set to zero. Other values can work. Too. A positive charge conductor can be at a negative potential if in the presence of a larger positive charge, a larger negative charge. I think. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, potential would decrease, but where that positive charge is, the potential goes to infinity. So. Uh, I, I think this particular description, um, so this is positive should have been negative. And this um, doesn't actually impact the things the way that someone might imagine it impacts. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, it got the things overall right, but this should have been a larger negative charge to basically drag down the electric potential around itself to negative values. Uh, okay, the, that crucial detail is wrong, but you know, you got the overall idea right, actually. Um, okay, the next question, does the capacitance of a device, okay. Um, the answer is it doesn't, even though in the definition of capacitance, it might look like it does. <laughs> Let's see if uh, Purple X gets it right. Um, yeah, it does not depend on applied voltage or the charge. Yeah, that's good. Wow, well, that's good. Uh, let me ask you a follow-up question. Does uh, evaluate the value of capacitance zero or undefined? If the, that's untrue. Uh, let's see. Uh, Synthesis semi capacitors. Yeah, nonlinear thing. Okay. okay. Um, value is false. Itself, yeah, it's not dependent. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's proper of the capacitor. Um, yeah, so let me ask this follow -up question. Uh, why does it say then that uh, capacitance is equal to charge divided by voltage? Uh, doesn't this make C the capacitance dependent both on Q and V? The answer is their common thing that they depend on Q or V, um, they cancel out of numerator and denominator. Uh, uh, in the context of uh, looking at capacitors. Is it going to apologize? Yeah, it is indeed. And imply instead it defines capacitance, yeah. The precise increase the voltage of yeah, more, yeah. So they both depend on a common variable that'll cancel out. Well, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's a, I think, good response. All right, last question, and then uh, we'll look at the problems and questions as many as we can in the remaining time. So to increase their capacitance, they should be closer together, I think. That way you need less voltage to store the same charges. Uh, closer, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can also look at the formula. <laughs> uh, 
uh, energy stored uh, as you change the distance. Um, so I gotta think of it. So if you pull them farther apart, increase decreasing capacitance, energy stored actually increases if uh, um, they are not connected to anything. If you keep the charges constant rather than voltage. Um, so the answer here should actually be insufficient information provided because you have to be told what it is you are keeping constant. Let's see. Uh, yeah, and if you're, uh, I see, if the capacitor remains connected to a battery, right, <laughs> then you can use this formula and say that decreasing capacitance means uh, less uh, energy stored. Uh, if, yeah, yeah, good. If the capacitor is disconnected from battery, yeah, charge is constant, then energy store is directly proportional to that. Yeah, so I guess it's not giving the explanation for that. Let me just uh, quickly write it down. This is how I would uh, explain that uh, apparent contradiction. So you have, um, so the expression that I memorize for memorizing the uh, amount of energy stored on capacitor is actually based on the definition of uh, voltage and energy, you know, charge times voltage. Now, in the context of capacitor, there's a factor one half. There's a calculus reason for it. <laughs> um, now, given this expression, you can rewrite it in two different ways using the definition of capacitance. Capacitance is uh, Q, amount of charge stored, divided by V. You can use this to eliminate Q if you do that, then what you get is u is equal to, um, um, so wait, to use that to eliminate q, so I'm plugging in c times v, so it's going to be 1 half c times v squared, uh, which is, yeah, the expression that's there. Or you can use this expression to eliminate v, then, you know, solve for v, you know, q over c, plug that in, then you get q squared divided by 2c. So, um, so you have these uh, three different expressions, and they are all correct together at the same time. Like none of them are wrong. It's a matter of um, if uh, in your setup what you have kept constant is a voltage, then you know this expression or the expression is a little bit cumbersome to use because you have to look at the change in the voltage to figure out the Q, and then you know substituting the new value of Q. Um, on the other hand, in your setup, if uh, Q is the thing that changed and voltage remained the same, then um, then you would use uh, this expression. You know, the thing that contains only the quantity that changed and other uh, constant parameters that it depends on. Um, so, so the formula that they given didn't give you is this: that when the Q remains the same, you want to use this so that um, you, you can keep Q constant. And as the capacitance changes, you can see more easily how the stored energy changes. Okay. Um, see, how does the energy stored in the... I have the capacitor isolated. Oh, yeah. So this is, again, the question of what happens to the energy as you change the capacitance C. Uh, so, so that the thing storing the capacitor decreases. Uh, is that right? Um, yeah, decreases, that makes an intuitive sense. Let me just uh, write it down. So, um, so your energy stored is either one half um, CB squared or one half Q squared over C. So your, um, decreases because oh, uh, because what would be happening is um, so with the dielectric your C would be going up your C is going up and as your C goes up it's a question of does V change or does Q change um, and you made it so that, uh, I don't know, this might be a little bit um, more time consuming to, well, because uh, so it reduces the voltage. Um, uh, the, but the, yeah, yeah, that, that's right, voltage is changing, but uh, I think you basically have to plug in the kind of the numerical factors that change and um, <laughs> do a scaling argument. So, you know, C is increasing. 
V is decreasing, and the factor by which they change is the same. Like if C increased by factor of two, V would decrease by factor of two. Um, so what makes the difference is this, really. And I don't think you can make the argument to the Q, the net charge along the surface changed. So that's a little trick here. If the capacitor is connected to the battery, I guess you could have guessed that it, um, actually here um, you can more easily see V will remain constant. So as the C increases, the stored energy will increase. All right, so that I think those are good answers. Um, as I think I started the saying, uh, uh, there might be situations where this is a good learning tool. You know, if it's giving you most usually correct answers with detailed explanation and somehow that helps you absorb the material, then by all means. Um, whatever is helping you learn physics can't be wrong. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, in the end, the, the, the kind of the measuring stick in this class is, can you solve physics uh, problems? And some of that, um, how well you can solve physics problems, it does depend on how well you understood the concepts. So if uh, tools like this help you learn the concepts, then great, uh, use it for those purposes, not for corner cutting purposes. <laughs>